Hi, uh, my name is Shazli Hassan. I'm the lead TRT pharmacist at Pharmacy Republic at Nebula Health. Today we'll talk about the negative feedback system in males. It's called the uh, male hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis or the male hypothalamic pituitary testicular axis. Uh, one thing to learn, uh, know about hormones and endocrinology is all to do with negative feedback. So we'll show, we'll illustrate this when we go through this uh, uh, this pathway. So. Let's look at what we're dealing with. So this, if you want, this is all happening in the brain. So the hypothalamus is above the pituitary. The pituitary gland hangs off this stalk. And we've got the anterior pituitary, which is at the front, and you've got the posterior pituitary. All in all, they release six hormones, and it's known as the master gland. And it gets messages from the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is like the brain's CPU, or you know, central processing unit, the computer, which detects the levels of hormone in the blood. And this is when we get that negative feedback effect. Okay, so where is the anterior pituitary? So anterior pituitary is right here in the bridge of the nose. If I was to put a pencil in my nose and shove it up, I'd hit the pituitary gland, something I'm not gonna do. So when the hypothalamus detects low levels of testosterone in the blood, it releases gonadotropin releasing hormone to the anterior pituitary. It then tells the anterior pituitary to release this luteinizing hormone, which then acts on Leydig cells in the testes to stimulate the production of testosterone. Testosterone gets released into the blood, causing uh, a negative feedback because once levels reaches, once the testosterone reaches a certain level, it turns off its own production. Here we can, it turns off production at the hypothalamic level. So we don't get a release of gonadotropin releasing hormone and it turns it off at the anterior pituitary level, it switches off luteinizing hormone. We don't get the message from the brain to produce testosterone, testosterone levels fall. Once testosterone levels fall, then the hypothalamus detects this, releases GRH to the anterior pituitary, which then releases luteinizing hormone to testosterone, you get the message. Okay. Also, something very important to realize is there's a barrier between the testes and the, the blood. So when testosterone is produced locally, it can actually act on the Sertoli cells and it can help in the production of active sperm, okay? Now, if we quickly go through the other pathway, so GRH is releases, uh, is stimulates the anterior pituitary, which then releases FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, which acts on Sertoli cells to release sperm, okay? Uh, to stop the production so we don't produce masses of sperm, we have we release inhibin, which has a negative feedback at the anterior pituitary and hypothalamic uh, levels, more so at the anterior pituitary levels. Okay, so that's not the total picture because we also have testosterone, which gets also uh, it gets acted on by a number of enzymes to produce different products. So in another video we explained how testosterone uh, is acted upon by the aromatase enzyme predominantly in fatty tissue to produce estrogen, okay? Estrogen is important in men, although it's associated with females, it's very important in men because it's good for our bone health and our mental health. Uh, it also gets converted to DHT. DHT acts on a number of organs such as the prostate, too much DHT can cause the prostate to swell and unfortunately it also acts on the hair follicles to cause male pattern baldness. We can stop these two uh, pathways. One of the drugs is anastrozole which stops the production of testosterone to estrogen. Uh, we've covered this in another video and another drug stops the production of DHT by blocking this enzyme here, the 5-alpha reductase, by a drug called finasteride. So when the prostate gets too large, we use a strength of finasteride 5 milligram. Uh, they call it benign prostatic hypertrophy, or BPH. For the hair, if we want to protect the hair follicles, we use finasteride in a lower strength, 1 milligram. Okay, so when we take TRT in the form of sustenone or testosterone and anti, effectively what we're doing is we're introducing testosterone into the blood. Remember what we said, when the hypothalamus detects testosterone into the blood, it has a negative feedback effect, okay? So when testosterone is injected into here, imagine this is the blood vessel, it will tell the hypothalamus, yeah, we've got enough testosterone, no need to send uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone to the anterior pituitary, so the anterior pituitary doesn't release lut uh, luteinizing hormone. 
that testosterone blocks at these two levels, at the hypothalamic and the anterior pituitary levels. And this is what happens when we add susanone or testosterone enanthe or any other testosterone ester into the blood. So we turn off this pathway, so we don't produce testosterone, okay? So when you start TRT, you will see these two hormones, they'll be negligible, they will drop drastically because we're telling the hypothalamus we've got enough, don't need to produce any more. That has consequences. We, there is a one in 10 chance that you could lose fertility. Because remember, you need testosterone produced locally or intratesticular testosterone for the sperm to be active. There's a one in 10 chance that it could affect your fertility. Does that mean that you, if you want TRT, your fertility has at risk or can we do something to help preserve? We can. And what we can do is we can mimic the actions of the luteinizing hormone by giving something called HCG, we use Ovitrol. So HCG mimics the effect that luteinizing hormone has on the Leydig cells. So it tells the testes to produce testosterone artificially, okay? So when the testes produce testosterone, intratesticular has an effect on the sperm. And then that's how we can, that's one way we can help preserve fertility. Another way is quite clever, Clomid. You may have heard of Clomid. Clomid acts on the hypothalamus, on the estrogen receptors in the hypothalamus. So it blocks the estrogen receptors in the hypothalamus. So the brain knows that the estrogen comes from testosterone. So therefore, it assumes that the testosterone levels are low. And what Clomid actually stimulates is the increased production of FSH more so and LH. So we still get that increase in testosterone. So that concludes uh, this video on the male hypothalamic pituitary testicular axis. So hopefully now you've got a better appreciation where testosterone fits into the whole negative feedback effect. And you can uh, gain an appreciation why we would use HCG or even Clomid. If you like the videos, please uh, press like and subscribe to our videos. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you want us to cover any topics, also leave a comment and we'll make a video about it. And also if you're in the West Midlands area, pop into our pharmacy in Nuneaton where you can have your testosterone blood tests and you can have a free consultation on TRT. So thanks for watching and see you next time.